Hello everyone and welcome to TechiTube. Today I'll be explaining the reasons and advantages of using twisted pair cables that we usually find in telephone lines, local area networks, audio cables, and in data communications in general. So let's start with the basics and consider the case of having just one single wire to transmit digital data. We call this form of transmission a single-ended transmission. The data to transmit can be a digital signal or an analog signal, but for this example, we are going to consider a digital signal. The positive bits can be plus 5 volts or plus 3 volts, for example, and the zero bits are simply zero volt. Now, once we start transmitting data, it generates a current that flows through the conductor. This flow of current produces an electromagnetic field around this conductor. And as we know, the direction of the electromagnetic field follows the right-hand rule. Now, in practice, we have many conductors near each other that transmits data simultaneously and the electromagnetic field created by each wire becomes a problem. The problem is that the electromagnetic field emanating from each conductor will affect the data transmitted in the other conductors. To explain this problem better, let's take the example of just two conductors transmitting simultaneously. Basically, the electromagnetic field from the first conductor will cause an image of the signal from transmitter 1 to be carried by the second conductor. So, how did we end up with the signal from transmitter 1 in the second wire? The second wire basically acts as an antenna. And once it sees this electromagnetic field, it starts sensing the signal that is generating this magnetic field. And it reproduces a copy of that signal. The reproduction may not be clean, like you see here. It might be distorted a bit. This would be noise to the second conductor. And when this noisy signal rides on top of the signal in the second conductor, it becomes very difficult for the receiver to decode it. Similarly, the same thing happens in the first conductor. This is what we call crosstalk. In the old days, in the public telephone networks, while you are conversing on the phone, you could hear the conversation from another line sometimes. And this is due to crosstalk. Another term, technical term, that is used in literature is electrical coupling between conductors. So how can we eliminate crosstalk? Well, to eliminate crosstalk, each transmitter will have to use two conductors instead of one conductor to transmit data. The data to transmit is sent in the first conductor. The second conductor will carry the opposite copy of the data transmitted in the first conductor. It is the same data, but it is reversed in polarity. As you see in this example, the positive bits, plus 5 volts, become simply negative bits, minus 5 volts in the second line. And because of this, the electromagnetic field around the second conductor will have the same magnitude as the first conductor, but it will be in the opposite direction. And therefore, they cancel each other. You can see this as if two forces are pulling to the opposite directions. So this is how the crosstalk is eliminated, just by using a pair of cable for each transmission. This type of transmission is called differential signaling transmission. 
Also note that the receiver decodes the signal by subtracting the second transmitted signal from the first transmitted signal. The resultant is simply the first transmitted signal amplified. So we have the output V out equal VA minus VB. Now I have said that the crosstalk will be eliminated. In reality, it will not be completely eliminated, but it will be drastically reduced. As you see here, the first wire from transmitter 2, the blue wire, is much closer to the second wire of transmitter 1 than the first wire. And because of the blue wire proximity to the red wire, then along the blue wire, the electromagnetic field emanated from the red wire, I call it here EB, will be slightly stronger than the magnetic field from the green wire, EA. So they don't completely cancel along the blue wire. Instead, we have a small electromagnetic field in the direction you see here. This will create a very small crosstalk coming from the red wire. Note this crosstalk is much smaller than the case of having the single-ended transmission. So with differential signaling transmission, we have accomplished a big reduction of crosstalk, but not completely eliminated. So far we have seen why we have a pair of conductors for each data transmission in Ethernet cable or voice transmission in telephone lines, but we have not seen why they are twisted. And that's what we will see next. Okay, so let's look at another disturbing effect that telephone lines and Ethernet cables need to deal with which is the external electromagnetic field. There are many examples of external sources of electromagnetic interferences that you can find at home or in industry, such as motors, computers, air conditioners, heating systems, power cords, power lines, etc. So how the internet cable can be protected from the external EMIs. Well, first let's see how the data in the differential signaling cable gets affected. The EMI radiation will always reach one conductor before it reaches the other one, which means EMI will introduce noise in one cable before the other. To simplify things, if this is our noise, then this noise will ride the transmitted signal on conductor 1 first and the signal from conductor 2 will not get any noise until the EMI radiation reaches conductor 2 as you see in this picture. Okay. So the noise does not get introduced in the conductors at the same time. As explained before, the differential signaling works only when the signal from the second conductor is the exact copy of the signal from the first conductor. And that's not the case here. So the receiver will not be able to decode properly the transmitted signal. As you see here, if we subtract the second signal from the first signal, this is what we get. Obviously, we don't get the same transmitted signal. So how can we solve the external EMI interference? Remember, the external EMI interference is a problem because it reaches one cable before the other one. The way we solve this problem is simply by twisting the cables. In this case, the EMI reaches the two cables at the exact same time. Therefore, the noise will be added to the two signals at the same time, and the receiver 
will be able to remove the noise when it subtracts one signal from the other. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and do hit the like button. And I hope to see you in another video. Thank you.